Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this presentation about Internet of Things. My name is Peter Martin, I'm from Nijmegen, that's somewhere in the Netherlands, in the east. And I have my own company called DB8. And I give customer support to uh, people who with Joomla websites and also do Joomla development. And after 12 years of uh, configuring Joomla websites, I was fed up with it. So I released my first commercial extension. It's uh, Options Manager. And with it, you can export all your options. So instead of going to Articles, Options, and click everything you don't want to show, uh, you just do it once and export it. And I have a free version that can do it for uh, op uh, these kinds of things. It's called Options Manager Lite. You can find it on uh, uh, the extension directory. By the way, this presentation will be online afterwards, and all the blue uh, words are links to the websites. And I will uh, also uh, have my, the code for my presentation online afterwards. Uh, I'm also a Joomla volunteer. I'm helping out at Joomla Forum for quite some time. And I'm a Joomla Operations Department coordinator. Um, in this presentation, I will tell something about Internet of Things. I will uh, show you a small project I did. Uh, I will tell you something about MQTT. And finally, I will do a demo with uh, this kind of stuff. And if we talk about Internet of Things, what's your uh, feeling about Internet of Things? What is it? It's, it's a lot in the news because of security issues. And yeah, yeah, it is. So the Internet of Things, um, I found an, uh, a really nice definition on uh, Twitter after I posted it myself. And it's about uh, Internet of Things. It's um, a network of devices that can uh, communicate with it, each other autonomously. And when we talk, think about uh, autonomously, we know we have to be careful with machines and autonomously, because I don't know if you know the, the movie The Terminator. Uh, yeah, we all happened, what we know what happened over there. So if you talk about Internet of Things and devices that can co be connected using the Internet and do things autonomously, we have to think about what's a nice application of it. What can make it popular? Well, uh, I think in, in, uh, in uh, the, uh, the Americans uh, made this uh, refrigerator. Uh, it has in internet inside, but it's also internet of things. So if you run out of milk, it will order milk for you. I think that um, the British have a smarter solution. Uh, it's this uh, fridge cam. It's only 99.99 pounds. And what it does, you just put the device in your refrigerator and when you are in the grocery store, you just look at your phone and you can look inside your refrigerator if you're out of milk, which is much more e cheaper and even more convenient. However, uh, I don't like to look in my refrigerator or do stuff automatically. So I was looking into other things. What can you do with Internet of Things? And I don't know how many here in the room know the Arduino. Who knows, who knows the Arduino? Okay, this is a really tiny microcontroller. And you've probably seen it somewhere in use, like people use it for Demotica, to automate things at home. And you also have artists that use it in their light shows, etc. Because what it does, you can create a small program, you can connect this machine using the USB to your uh, computer. Uh, you write the code on your computer and you uh, compile it for this machine. Uh, the code will be there. You just connected it. You put nine volt uh, battery power on it and it will start running your program over and over and over again. So people use it to, to, to sw uh, switch lights, etc. And it's really nice. However, it's just a thing. It's not internet of things. And I think it was in 2014, I read an article about this chip. It's a really tiny chip, this, this, this size. And uh, when I bought it, it was maybe $5 on eBay. 
And it's really nice chip to uh, connect your Arduino or other devices to the internet. So what it does, you have to co connect your Arduino to uh, the, this, this Wi-Fi chip. And this Wi-Fi chip will connect with your uh, Wi-Fi router at home. And then you can just connect machines to the internet using your own Wi-Fi router. And these days it's really cheap. It's all only uh, just one pound. And there is TCP IP on it, so it has an internet stack. And there are problems with it as well. The first problem, uh, who used the modem in the past? The, the, the one with the weird noises. If you wanted to use it, uh, your software had to use AT commands, Haze style commands. Um, if you want to connect this one to the internet, you have to use a Haze style commands, the, the old vintage commands, which is not really practical. So this was problem number one. But more important, it was made by Espressive, which is a Chinese firm, and they only had the documentation in Chinese. <laughs> um, not really convenient. However, some uh, people translated it into English, and that made it possible for other people to, to know and to look into this machine as, uh, as well. So if you look at this really tiny chip, there are eight pins on it. And the eight pins on it, they correspond with certain pins over here. So uh, TX and RX means receive and transmit. Uh, you need some power, in this case 3.3 .3 volts, and of course ground, so uh, these two are already, uh, four are already uh, gone. But there are two pins on it, which has GPIO 0 and GPIO 2, and that's really interesting for Internet of Things, because GPIO means general purpose input out, output, Meaning, you can put something on it that does something with input, like a switch, or maybe a measurement device. But you can also output stuff, like an LED, or a switch or something else with it. So, um, something else. This chip, um, you can uh, flash it yourself. The clever hackers found out that one of the chips on it, uh, just like the Arduino, you can uh, write c uh, something for the Arduino and just flash the Arduino. You could flash this chip as well, so you can use it without the Arduino if your code is really small. I will do a demo of that later on. You need some uh, software development kit, which is a bit difficult. And fortunately, if you uh, use Arduino, you can use the Arduino IDE. So. The program to program the Arduino, you can use it to program this device. So my Internet of Things project, uh, it's this small device. Here you see the chip I, I bought. Um, first of all, uh, the white thing is called a breadboard. In the past, when people wanted to make uh, electronic devices, they had to solder all the devices to each other. You still do it when it's complete, but when you just want to experiment, you just can use things like this. You have those wires and you just connect the wires to other uh, devices. And there I had my first problem. Uh, the pins on this uh, chip are too close for this gutter. So here you see an IC socket. I uh, just cut it, cut it in half, and I made my own bridge. So here you see this, the side. This is what I made to put this on uh, the, the bread pin. So I was able to uh, connect devices to it. So if you want to uh, put your own program on this machine, uh, you need something from your computer to this device. And it's called uh, a TTL serial uh, interface and you have to connect uh, the pins to the right pins, and it's a bit, yeah, tricky, but uh, if you are able to do this, you can also just flash it. So here you can see uh, some commands that I used uh, to flash the program, which you don't, which I don't show you here, but I ended up with a temperature sensor. And this temperature sensor had uh, three batteries of 1.5 volt, meaning it's four and a half volt, but it wants 3.3 volt. So here I have a sort of a converter to, to, to step it down. 
And this device, I connected it to the internet, to a website called thinkspeak.com. You can go to thinkspeak.com, uh, create your own account, a free account, and then you can uh, use it to, to receive signals of other places, of other devices. And here you can see my temperature of my device uh, that was on the balcony. And 84 hours later, uh, the temperature on the balcony was more than 100 degrees Celsius. Meaning this was really unreliable because the battery, battery was just flat. I forgot that um, I was using Wi-Fi, and if you're using Wi-Fi, it's not really economical, so it drained the power of the batteries. So uh, I had, next time I do something like that, I will bring it in sleeping mode every time after it's uh, communicated the temperature. So the problem with my uh, small project, it's a one-on-one -on -one communication. And also, it uses REST, which can be heavy, and I want it to be really uh, something really small. So I was looking for something else, and I found all these message protocols that are used for Internet of Things. And here you have them. Um, I looked in a couple of those, but uh, MQTT, Telemetry Transport, I found the most interesting, and I will tell you something about it now. Um, the interesting thing of uh, MQTT is, uh, it's a, a message broker that uses uh, publish and subscribe pattern. Meaning, you have one server, it's called MQTT broker. You have all these devices that can register themselves to the broker and then they can subscribe to topics. And if another device posts something in a certain topic, all the subscribers that are subscribed to that topic will receive the message. And it sounds a bit abstract, isn't it? You use WhatsApp, I think, on the phone. You have WhatsApp with groups. Okay, MQTT is just WhatsApp for machines. So with WhatsApp, you have a WhatsApp server. In my case, I will use an MQTT server. With WhatsApp, you have the groups, and the groups are topics for MQTT and you have members and you can post in a group or publish to a topic. So they're really comparable. So um, the, about topics, you can think about everything. I mean, it, you are really free to do something with it, but it's uh, hierarchically, hierarchically uh, structured with forward slashes. So you can have your house, uh, which you catch in your living room, and you can just have um, uh, a topic about it. It doesn't mean that I have a, a kitchen and I have a temperature device in the kitchen, I just called my uh, topic temp and I can do anything, I can publish anything in it, but it would be logical to use names uh, for your devices. In this case, temp, I would use a temperature device in my kitchen. You can um, subscribe or uh, publish the topics with um, uh, wildcards, you have the plus, which is a single level wildcard. So if I do it like this, I have three topics that will uh, listen to. And you could also use multi-level. So uh, this is uh, the Internet of Things with MQTT. However, if you talk about Internet of Things, I already mentioned security. There is a, a big problem with security these days. You have all those uh, devices that are just connected to the Internet. You can uh, uh, use them and also uh, program them using the internet, but consumers don't know it. They just buy something, they are uh, television, they connect it to uh, uh, their uh, electricity, but also uh, to a, with the cable of the ethernet cable, and then they can watch television. And meanwhile, my, there might be some programs on uh, the television that are using internet of things, and uh, maybe, uh, it, it communicates all the programs you watch to the, to the uh, manufacturer, these kind of things. But also, if there's a problem in it, you don't know, the, the consumer doesn't know it. So uh, the television can be hacked without knowing. So if you want to do something with MQTT yourself or with Internet of Things, you have to think about the security. And you have to think about security in three different areas. The first area is authentication. So if you have a, a broker, 
you have to limit access to the broker. So you can use a username and password, but you can also use something like public-private keys or, or OAuth. The second thing is the authorization itself. So if you have MQTT with uh, different channels, you can uh, limit the, the use of the topics or maybe the operations for some subscribers. And finally, uh, you have to think about the messages themselves and you can uh, secure the communication for that. And you can secure the communication using uh, TLS, which is uh, same as SSL, which we use for a website that has HTTPS. And of course, also, you can secure the payload. So what do you need to use MQTT? Well, first of all, you need a broker. And I already mentioned uh, ThinkSpeak, but there are also that's others that you can use. However, I like Linux, I like uh, Raspberry Pi, so I use an MQTT broker for the Raspberry Pi, uh, for the Linux, and it's called Mosquito. And besides a server, you need a client, and I will demonstrate uh, MQTT FX on my computer, and I will also demonstrate uh, a mobile phone application uh, with MQTT on my <laughs> mobile phone. Finally, you have the devices. For the devices, you need some uh, Arduino IDE to program it, but you also need some libraries, so uh, the chips in it know how to communicate with MQTT, but also how, know how to use the Wi-Fi chip in it. And finally, you have also some scripts for uh, PHP, etc. So uh, now it's demo time. And oh. And what I will do, I will uh, synchronize the screens so I can see the same as you do. Okay, so the first thing I want, like, would like to show you, I have a Raspberry Pi, and this in, in, the, in the past I used Duplo, the, the, the large Lego, and now I use the large Lego, uh, the small Lego. Because I, don't ha I don't, didn't know the Wi-Fi password here, so I didn't know how to program uh, this stuff to use the local Wi-Fi to go to the internet. And also, uh, because sometimes you don't have internet, I brought so some sort of internet with me. So this Raspberry Pi has a Wi-Fi dongle on it, and I will connect my machine to this Raspberry Pi first. So this is my local network. Now I'm connected to my Raspberry Pi. You don't see it, but I have to uh, So now I'm connected to my Raspberry Pi. I'm logged in, and I will start um, uh, the MQTT broker. Okay, so the MQTT broker here is active, and it's just a server, and it listens to things, to devices. And the first thing I'm gonna do now is on my uh, laptop, I have this uh, MQTT FX client, it's MQTT, and with MQTT, it, it's in Java, so it will take some time to start. But when it starts, 
I will connect it to the MQTT broker as well. And I should have started it beforehand. Ah, there it is. Um, so the first thing I do, I connect it to uh, the Wi-Fi broker. Then I go to the uh, broker status to show you, I subscribe to uh, the Raspberry Pi MQTT. So now you can see that there is one client connected to the Raspberry Pi MQTT. And what I can do, I can subscribe to a channel called test. And if I publish something, Hello Jimla Day UK, and I publish it also in the channel called Test. If I go to subscribe, here you can see the message arrived. So what I did from my laptop, I sent an MQTT message to the, this machine, and it has a topic called Test. And because this machine is also subscribed to Test, this one will give the message back to this machine. But this is not really fun. The fun part starts now. I have my uh, mobile phone and I can connect to uh, my Raspberry Pi as well. So I have this client on my mobile phone. Um, what shall I say? Mobile or something? So I just said mobile phone, on my mobile phone. Uh, this machine is connected to uh, the MQTT, so therefore I can just send messages. But what I'm doing now is just sending messages. There's no I IoT involved. I mean, we can all use this as a sort of uh, WhatsApp for ourselves, but we are not machines. So. I have this small device, um, it's a temperature device and humidity device and I have a small board and I have a battery pack. I hope I connect it right. Okay, so um, what you can see, the lights are on, and it says, because I programmed it so that there will be a message, I programmed it to uh, give this message humidity sensor. And if it would be an autonomous device, it would maybe uh, send every five minutes uh, the message, the, the temperature here. It, I think it's really chilly right here, but how chilly is it? We can test. So. I didn't make it autonomously. I still have to uh, say something like temp. And I programmed it, if I say temp, to the channel test, it will receive it. And it will say, I think it's 19 degrees, but 21. Oh, it feels chilly, but it is not really that chilly. So it's 21 degrees. It isn't. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I have to connect it again. Uh, and that will be as soon as you actually set it up again. So uh, it will say it again. And I'll ask for the temperature again now. <laughs> okay, then we can try something else. Maybe it's the humidity level. It's, uh... So 
I also pr programmed uh, this, humidity. And it's 45.9. Could you please breathe into uh, the device? Yeah, the, the, the white, the white uh, device on the, on the top. Just breathe in it. Did you drink any beer or wine? Well, we have to do it properly. <laughs> Yes, only beer. <laughs> I think I, uh, uh, what I did when I, uh, when I tried it, I disconnected it probably, or maybe uh, I blew too hard. But you can see it's, it's increased, it's increased. So, this is something you can, it's now 85, 84. So this is not really, I mean, this is Internet of Things, but let me show you uh, how uh, I flash the, this kind of stuff. So I use uh, a software called um, Arduino IDE. And I have to connect this to my laptop. Uh, there is already a programming program on it, so it will give one message. Oh. Okay. Uh, so it will probably say something, but. Um, We're going to give it a sort of message. So what shall we say? Joomla rocks. Something else, same word. Someone, a nice word, English word, chili. So you know that I'm just doing it like this. So the first time, when you have a program, in this case, I have a, a program, it's in C++, and it will uh, connect to the uh, MQTT broker and it will listen for certain commands. And uh, it will give also a startup message. So the first thing you have to do, you have to compile it, so uh, it will create this code and it will create machine code with it. Okay, I don't need the updates now. So, um, it's still compiling, but then it will be say it's done. Okay, now it's done. So, it's okay, otherwise I would have get, got an error, and now I can upload it to this machine. And I think this has costed me maybe an evening of my life. You are flashing it, and you get this error. <coughs> What's this error? Uh, ESP com open field, uh, and then you go Google, find all the things, and you try all the things, and maybe after four hours, I found out that um, there is a reset button on uh, this small device, and if you upload it, you have to keep the re reset button pressed until it starts compiling, and now you can see no error message, and it just starts compiling. Well, thank you, four hours. <laughs> And when it's compiled, uh, I mean uh, on the machine, I will disconnect it from my laptop. So you can see it's really, uh, yeah, not connected to my laptop anymore when I do stuff with it. So I need, I need some power. Oh, let me go to, uh, yes, it already said it. But it will set it again. So I have a couple of commands, like 
blink underscore red. Or was it red blink? It was red blink. Yes. So if I send a command like red blink to my channel called uh, test, you can see the LED is blinking red. And the same with green. Oh, I disconnected it in the wrong way. Sorry? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yes, yes. So what you can see now, I just created the, the device that listens to um, green blink or red blink, but, um, and MQTT is nice as well, I think. But we are at a Joomla day here. Uh, I have not seen Joomla here in this presentation yet, so let's bring Joomla into it. So what I did, I created um, a really nice Joomla website. Oh. And it has a really nice front end. So sometimes you have hackers. I mean crackers, because hackers are make people who make stuff, uh, and the crackers are trying to, 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 to kill your website. So in this case, I have a, a, a cracker who wants to log in. And what I did, I created a small uh, plugin in Joomla, and the plugin uh, will trigger the red light. I mean, it's a user plugin. Uh, let's first. So normally, usually, when you try to log in and uh, you don't exist, you get an error message like username or password do not match. So what I did, I created a small plugin. The code will be online or is already online. But what it does, um, it listens to this error message, and in. It, it will send a message to um, my machine. So now uh, we have the same hacker again, cracker I mean, and they try to log in. And look at the light, if I try enter. So you can see that hackers are active at your website. I do it again, the red light goes on. If we create websites for Joomla, or I mean a Joomla website, we don't do it to, to look at crackers. I don't want to, to look at the crackers. I would look at, look at my visitors. So is your website popular? Well, you can create a plugin. Uh, in this case, I created an article plugin, a content plugin. And this content plugin will be triggered when an article is read on the front end. So when you go on the front end to uh, uh, contact us, nothing happens. This is not an article, this is the contact form. But if I go to about us, it's an article, the green light should go on. So now I can see every time I refresh, we have a visitor uh, reading an article on the website. This is nice. And if you have a website, do, do, does somebody of you have has a web shop? No web shops in the room? Yes, okay, one. Well, um, you have probably multiple devices or mu multiple things in your store. Maybe some things are one pound and the other are maybe 30 pound. If the, the green light is on, you don't know if you get rich or really rich. So you can do something about that as well. So um, I have to, to log in my Raspberry Pi again. This is the uh, 
So what I did, my Raspberry Pi has an access point for me, so I can connect to it. It has an MQTT server inside, but I also installed a Python client in this machine. So the Python is Python is a, uh, a language, and the client is connected to the same uh, Wi-Fi channel. So what should happen if I go to About Us and if I refresh? Um, it should display something. Yes. So now it shows that I'm a visitor, but in your case with your webshop, you can uh, put the, the, yeah, the amount of, uh, of the orders on it. So this way you can communicate from your webshop to yourself, uh, or maybe you can also look at your phone, because if you subscribe your phone to the same MQTT channel, you will see the, the messages there as well. So this way you can, you, you can combine those. But what I just showed you is um, communication from a website to Internet of Things devices. But maybe sometimes you want to have it differently, like uh, you have uh, uh, a device over there which is a temperature and you want to see the temperature on your website. So I created uh, a module and the module uses something called WebSockets. And so if I refresh, I should have now uh, a WebSocket over there. And I'm still thinking that it's chilly over here, so let's go back to the MQTT server and I just ask the temperature again. Now the temperature should be here, probably. It's, uh, if it works, yes, it's still 21 degrees. And now it also says there, 21 degrees. So. Um, if I'm here, I can uh, write something. And publish it. So I said, that's it. Questions? Oh, it's, I, I wrote it two times. So, questions? <laughs> Any questions? How so, many sorry? How many devices? How many devices are what? How many devices? On the machine? Yes. Uh, the question is, uh, how many devices can you attach to the machine? I have no idea. Hundreds, I think, um, because they just listen to the topic. Uh, they are subscribed to it. Yeah. So, some some might subscribe to certain topics that you that you rarely use, and other others like maybe you have a doorbell and you ring your doorbell and uh, you want to have a message on your phone that the doorbell has been rang on a certain time. Yeah, it's not useful uh, to put it in a test channel. You have uh, maybe a doorbell channel or something. Uh, yeah, I, th I think it's it's limited. I mean, it's probably the memory of the Raspberry Pi that I use. But now I use a Raspberry Pi, but if you use it at home, you might use a server somewhere. Um, yeah, it's, it's the same like uh, how many emails can you send with your Outlook, if you have Outlook email. Uh, it's the memory of the device determines it, I think. So, okay, thank you. Another question. So I have a question for you. Uh, uh, what are you going to build tonight? <laughs> um, I have my uh, code and my slides on uh, slides.db8.nl. Oh, I have connected my device to, to this so it doesn't <laughs> work now. <laughs> So uh, there you can find the slides of this presentation and also uh, the code if you uh, want to look at things. By the way, um, I did this with a Joomla presentation, with a Joomla site, but you are unlimited. You can use all kinds of stuff. You can, uh, yeah, it's, it's just that I programmed the plugin for Joomla to use it because I like Joomla and uh, yeah, it works well with Joomla. 
But uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you for your uh, attention.